champion and Bruce is one of Bruce's main champions, but instead they go for the Karma. And I think the Karma is great because it allows Bruce to potentially play the Hyper Carry. At the same time, Flash Wolves are also looking to, to pick up whatever's remaining afterwards in the second rotation. Of course, that is going to be the Santa, something yeah. you've talked about a ton here. Uh, and fun fact, all right, so Stuart and I were doing some research about this before the, all, all the, com before the, the day started. Uh, cherries are actually not berries. <laughs> um, they are, in fact, a droop. Uh, and a droop is classified by having a thin skin, flesh, and then a seed in the center. So stuff like plums and cherries are not berries, they are droops. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't actually expect you to bring that Perfect. up. Great <laughs> analysis, by the way. And this is entirely relevant because... Nothing to do with Wild Rift at because all. <laughs> <laughs> because... Because cherry, you know, is a great juggler, right? Okay. Where are you uh, going with this? And <laughs> Troops belong in the jungle. <laughs> Let's jump back to what we have on screen right now. Set us in for JT, Kha'Zix, and Garrett for Flash Wolves. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> this is only the first game, Grant. We've still got potentially a full five games. You've already, oh, lost, yeah. me. You've already lost me. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, Kha'Zix going into the hands of Cookie. I think Kha'Zix has been one of the biggest priority junglers, I think, in the entire tournament. Really good during the you know mid game and late game in terms of scaling. You have Garen as well for Ysera. Interesting enough that it's gone for Garen. It could also be mid lane Garen, because I think the Camille most of the time goes into Ysera, but obviously that's banned, so that's maybe a second choice. But for the side of J Team, they have the big front line. You know, they have the Singe, they have the Wukong as the front line, uh, they have the center in the back line as well. The interesting part about J Team is that normally when they play the center, right. they don't really like to go for the Nasus. We sometimes see that Nasus being paired with Senna, but we've actually seen um, Senna for J team, you know, DY likes to prefer to go for the Galio or even the Gragas, right. which means that, you know, this kind of shows the potential of DY and it shows what they want. You know, DY is one of the best roaming supports in this entire tournament, you know, in the mid lane, in the Baron lane, trying to invade as well, roaming around with Cherry to be able to get that advantage and allow uh, J team to control the map. And it's interesting that you mentioned that because Flash was, I think, also identified that the Grag is banned. They don't want to allow that for J team. And also largely because I feel like Flash Wolves are a team that has similar champion pickups to J team, right? We understand that there's always, there are always going to be meta picks, but you it tends to be a lot sim more similar between teams like Flash Wolves, like J team, um, than other teams, for example. Yeah, e exactly. Yeah. And I think, you know, the bans on the other side as well, we can see that, you know, they scared of Bruce. They're very, very scared of Bruce. You know, Lucia ban, Zaya ban. So the other pick that is open is the, the Galio. But I think, like you said, you know, uh, Eason is another player that likes to play, you know, Gragas and Galio. But there, there you go. go, there's the Galio pick. Over. It away first. That's going to be on the hands of DY with uh, Berry down in the duo lane with the Senna. So it leaves the. The last pick, potentially a flex pick, you know, the Wukong can be played in the jungle and it can also be played in the barrel lane as well. Both Dawn and Cherry have played Wukong in this, uh, in Icon so far. So leaving that flex pick till last, which is another great thing about the red side. Flash Wolves now have to decide how they want to try and deal with this. A lot of combo Ooh. potential here from JT. You have the Wukong going in, the Galley to follow up with, of course, the Sage with the pickup potential. So I'm looking for Flash Wolves. Maybe they just need something that can help them get away. Karma gives them some, uh, uh, like mobility, some movement speed, but it's still going to be difficult to get away from a lot of the hard crowd control we see from JT. Yeah, and J-Team, you know, JT's comp just shouts at me, engage, engage, and oh, <laughs> Bruce's first game back in the Dragon Lane, back on a hyper carry. And I, I mentioned it, you know, the Karma allows you to play these hyper carries because Karma is the champion, you know, has the shields, has the peel, uh, peeling back as well. I think it's the first time we've actually seen Vayne and. Uh, in the AR, AR, yeah. Augmented yeah. yeah. reality. Is that just like a little tumble, a little spin? Yeah, a little tumble. First yeah. ability. Very nice cool. Nice little tumble. But yeah, Bruce in the hands of Vayne. I'm really, really excited to see this, you know. The, the bot lane that, you know, we've been hyping up with Flash Walls, you know, Bruce has been a player that mainly played mid lane during the uh, WCS, but now has to go, you know, transition into the duo lane with Bayer coming into the roster. But yeah, that duo lane is going to be very, very scary. And I think Vayne's a really good pick because if you look at J-Team, all of, the, all of it shouts frontline, all of it shouts tankiness. Oh, and what does Vayne love to do? Vayne loves to shred tanks with all of her true damage as well. So I think 
in this game, it's going to be all eyes on Bruce to see what he can do. But like you said, though, you know, J Team is all about engaged, all about going in. They want to try and shut down this vein, and they have a lot of tools to try and shut down the vein as well. That's a big potential. You got the, you have the Darius, you have the Singe, things yep. they could find the vein in bad situations. Flash Wolves need to pull ahead with that first win, putting it all onto Bruce. Let's start this one by talking a little bit about a matchup that I'm curious to hear your thoughts about, Stuart. Okay. Ysera versus Dawn. Almost said that Dawn is a different caliber of player. How does Ysera stack up? Yeah, yeah, sir. I mean, in this matchup, you know, you've got uh, Garen against uh, Darius. I think in terms of the players itself, you know, Ysera has shown that he can be a carry, you know, especially on that Camille. But I think, as Omo said on the analyst desk, you know, Dawn is a completely higher level. And you can see there's already a lot of aggression down in this uh, down this duo lane. Both exhausts already blown. But I think Ysera is going to have a, a bit of a difficult time. But saying that, he is on the Garen duty. He is on tank duty as well. Sure. So I wouldn't be surprised to see him play maybe a little bit more passive. But at the same time, we can see Garen, you know, yesterday, Garen spin to wins, full damage Garen. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. Uh, tank is a state of mind. <laughs> <laughs> you can, you're only a tank if you tell yourself, yeah, I'm a tank. I don't do damage here. But if you go in the mindset, yes, I will assassinate your, your Alistar, I'll take down your tanks. Yeah. Uh, you are very much a damage dealer. You're an assassin, in fact. We'll have to see what build Ysera goes for this game. We're already starting off with the Ruby Crystal, so maybe going for the uh, for the tanky approach. In terms of jungles as well, we got Cherry on a more tank utility jungler, I would say. You know, Wukong is not really known as a, uh, a carry jungler. Saying that long yesterday on the Wukong got that nice cheeky triple kill on the river, so it just shows that Wukong does have the... Uh, the damage and the outplay potential. And then cooking on the other hand, I think it's just going to be farming up, just trying to scale with, uh, wow. with Kha'Zix. But uh, Cookie? I love what Flash was doing here, trying to go in for the Scuttle Crab, but at the same time, the response from JT. They push in the bot side, ro rotate over, try to put some pressure down. Good from Cookie because Cherry down the bot side as well. He was able to take away the Scuttle Crab. That was really, really risky though by Cookie because th their bot lane didn't have any prior, so Barry and DY were able to roam up. But he just walked forward. He was just like, yeah, I'm just going to take this crab. I'm just going <laughs> to jump away. I don't really care if you, you know, deal enough damage. But to be honest, you know, Barry and DY don't really have that much damage. But Cookie able to smite that away and get the first Scuttle Crab. A, a, tra a trading tr uh, Scuttle Crabs, I feel like. I think it was actually Dawn that took the top lane Scuttle Crab. So Cherry won't be able to get any Scuttle Crabs. Wow. At all. DY goes in. Flashing in Ooh. for the Justice Punch. The knock up onto Bruce. And an opportunity here for J-Team with first blood on the Hyper Carry from Flash Wolves. This is the thing. It's like with Flash Wolves, I feel like you need to play a lot more passive in this duo lane because you have the range disadvantage with the vein. You don't want to play aggressive. And, you know, if you step up a little bit too far, DY has an opportunity. You know, E-Flash forward into the taunt as well. And then Barry with the follow-up means that they... They get first blood, and yeah. it, to be honest, it's too easy for JT. That is really too easy, and I feel like it's a little bit of a misplay by Bruce. I think you should realize that, you know, you're on the vein. You can just play back, you can play passive, just farm up. You don't need to trade at all, and you could just scale into late game, but instead they're going for these trades, and we already such as first blood. Bruce falling behind in gold, you know, yeah. in a situation where you're up against the passing center, where both sides jet tend to be a little bit behind in gold, they're actually ahead. You know, it's an it's uh, interesting situation That's for crazy. Bruce to be in right now. That is crazy. You can see that the supports are... A thousand gold ahead, you know, DY is a thousand gold ahead of Eason, but that makes sense because when you're playing Senna, as you said, it's fasting Senna right. for the people at home that don't know. It means that Senna, even though is the main carry, quote unquote, um, is going to be Galio taking all the farm. And Barry's jobs this game is just to get as many souls as possible. You can see Barry's just using the poke, and then DY is the one taking the farm, meaning that he's going to be able to build AP Galio, which looks like he's got what, he, what he's going with the Rod of Ages, means he can deal a little bit more damage at the same time. Very interesting start here from uh, Barry, right? Going for the Proto Belt, this trying to move in, maybe get, a top, maybe get the, the, the snare somewhere. Very interesting start here for J Team. They have a lot, of, a lot of pickoff potential, and I cannot emphasize this enough at this point. Right, you look yep. at what they have across the board. You have the upper hand for the Darius. You have the shoulder fling for the Singed. Of course, you have the the crowd control for the Wukong and for the Galio. That's a snare. Transcend and Embrace tries to pull them in, but you can very quickly see what happens here. The impact and the response out from J Team to quickly knock away Bruce. Not much HP left to play with. Gets hit by the exhaust and very quickly has to start moving away. But you can see the healing that's on the side of J Team as well. You know, Barry has the grasp with the healing. Also has the first ability for the first for the healing. DY also has Front of Life. More healings, so it's just healing, healing, healing this duo lane, meaning they can stay there as well. And they're going to even try and take the first tower of the game. Eason so low. Cookie might come down the bot this. side, but it looks like J Team have already secured for start wow. for themselves. Now we have to stop moving on to Eason. Eason flashes away, spots out danger. 
and they're really focusing on this bot side. We were talking about Bruce, you know, Bruce needs to make sure that he doesn't fall too far behind. And if, you know, the Vayne can get a few items and the Vayne can definitely, you know, roll over this game. But at the moment it's J team and it's Cherry moving down to the bot side. They get an early first tower. And that's even before the objective spawn as well, which means yeah. that they can go back to base, they can use that money that they got from that first tower, which is going to be the team gold, team wide gold that they get, go back, take the gold, and then also buy items, which means they can go to the objectives with a little bit of an advantage. First spawn coming up, Cookie's going to make his way over the Rift Tower. J-Team not want to give this they one fight up this. too easily. Rotate over. I believe Package picked up here for Baya, and so they get to fight for this position, but J-Team are so confident. Package or not, they do not care. Yeah, they're, they're not going to be able to contest this. I feel like, I feel like Flash Wolves, they, they don't have anything. They have the scaling oh. on their side as well. But they look, give this it up. Is, yeah, they just give it up. But at the same time, they're not even going to be able to take Dragon for this as well because everyone from Flash Wolves was trying to move over to that Rift Hole, trying to get that before J Team got onto the map. But the problem is they were way too slow. They were way too late to it. And now J Team, they could have the potential to take both objectives. What a dominant position here from J Team. You can see how little vision it is for Flash Wolves across the map once you cut past that middle line in the river. Not much vision there at all. And so JT, they get to go back, reset, come back for the Dragon now, start setting themselves up for position. And a, one thing I want to note with JT as well is what they did really, really well during planes and group stage. Like JT did really well controlling the map. You know, when they're ahead, if they have a little bit of an advantage, they go as a team, they group up, and they just... They, they can't... And they don't allow the enemy team to do anything at all. As you say that, Dawn... Flashes away and only has to put... His summoner spells to get away with his life. Going in mid as well. Bruce again in danger. They're chasing after a kill. The piercing darkness picks it up. Cherry flashes in for a safe measure. But they find a second diving into the mid lane. J team controlling the rift. And it's just too easy right now for J team. As I mentioned, you know, when they group together, they play as a unit. This is where J team can shine. You know, Dawn in the top oh. side did really well. And Baya? Baya, I don't know why you wouldn't Hit auto attack the, the rift, rift herald. herald. Yeah. Please. <laughs> I'm not too sure why you wouldn't rift, hit the Rift Tower. I, I, I know what he was thinking. It was like, okay, I'm gonna use my, I'm gonna use my, my ultimate. It's gonna land. I'm gonna auto attack it one time. It's gonna go down because he's like, oh yeah, I have Hellbreaker. I do this, um, but then he forgets that there are minions in the way, and he gets blocked by the minions, so he doesn't do enough damage. <laughs> Unfortunate, but again, this is Bruce tumbling forward. This is Bruce again playing aggressive, and it, you can't do this on a champion like Vayne. You know, if you're playing, I don't know, like a Draven or some someone like that. You know, a champion like that that has a more aggressive and a, a stronger early game, then that would be okay. But on the like as a Vayne, you can't tumble forward because, especially like you <laughs> mentioned, you know, against the Galio, against the Wukong, they can easily just engage onto you, and then that's it. You know, when you're chain CC, the Karma can only do so much, can only heal and shield you so much, and. Now is at a point of the game where J Team, you know, about 5,000 gold lead already. And you can see that, <laughs> look at the team gold. Every single one on uh, J Team is ahead of Flash Wolves. Ooh. That's the first time I think I've ever seen that. Even with the support players, because of the nature of Fast and Santa, here we have Cherry moving onto Yasera, bringing in DY as well. They're fighting towards the jungle right now. Center Embrace doesn't find that much done. Cherry finally gets taken down. Response here from Flash Wolves, fighting within their own jungle, but very quickly. A response back from J-Team again by taking down Bruce. Okay, they were able to pick off Cherry in the end. They were able to use Ysera's um, ultimate to be able to get it, and which was all good for Flash Wolves. But on the other hand, they were able to pick off uh, Bruce at the same time again. So a one-for-one -one trade. And look, this is what I was mentioning about J-Team. Once they get ahead, they move through the enemy junglers <laughs> and there's nothing you can do about it. This is so brutal here, Stuart. Diving under the turret. It just does not look like the objective is even there. They get the walk out. Dawn lives again after two kills go over to JT. And they just play with so much confidence. They're still playing aggressive, and even in the mid lane. This is jungle against mid lane, but Cherry might lose this one, though. Divine Sunderer gap, look at how much he's healing. He's just sustaining up so oh much. Every God. crushing blow does so much for Cherry here. My God, the Divine Sunderer, like you said, you know, the healing from the first ability, plus the healing from Divine Sunderer as well, means that he can sustain up against Bayer, and that's, that's even with Holebreaker as well. He had Holebreaker, so he had the extra armor and magic like resist did. as well. And, he was still able to win out that trade, and now for Flash Wolves, you have to do so. You have to do something. I feel like Flash Wolves—they're just, I feel like they're just running out of time already. To be honest with you, I feel like you know, with this comp, you need to wait until you scale into the middle late game. But it's at the point of the game already that it's just like, 
I, I think even if you get into the mid and late game, J-Team have already taken so much. They've taken the first tower, the first dragon, the first Rift Herald. The second Rift Herald's up, and look, you can see J-Team. They're already there. They're one step ahead of Flash Wolves. They're even going to try and kill Bayer. Catch on to Bayer, who has a package, so won't be able to get away despite the efforts from Pan to stop it. Ever watched the movie In Time with Justin Timberlake? And it's nope. like, so you, it's like everyone has like a, a timer on their watch, right? Well, I'm gonna focus on this for a second and get back to that point because Flash was responding down the bottom side. Rift Herald being picked up by J Team towards the other end. DY comes to the bottom side here to try to protect Dawn, but will ultimately get taken down a two for Rift Herald exchange across the map. I, I like this from Flash Wolves, you know, they're trying to make a practice play, but at the same time, you can see J Team, you know. You, you take one thing on the map, J-Team will take something else. They take the mid lane tower, which obviously did take that Rift Herald hit in the early game as well. They were even pushing in the Baron lane as well, so they're losing more and oh more. And it goodness. even gets a charge on the inhibitor tower as well. I felt like there was a smite angle. Did he have, oh, he did have smite up as well. I, I think yeah. so. He might, okay, I'm not gonna, I'm not, I'm not gonna think about this. <laughs> it, not gonna think about it anymore. The Rift Herald does what it does. All right. I, I feel like so, Rift Herald, you've just flamed time, Flash Rules twice in now. In time. <laughs> right. It's like it's like that. You, so you have like the timer on your like your 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 hand, and it tells mm. you how much time you have. It's like your global currency, right? It's like like flash wolves right now. You know they're left with like like a couple of minutes. A little bit, yeah. yeah. And they're like running to like pick up more time from like their friend. So like there's that, there's that scene in in time. You know when you need right was the the mom was running over to just Timberlake trying to pick up more time. Uh, uh, does not get there, and I feel like that's what's happening to flash wolves <laughs> now. They've got no, but like they have Arden sensor on Ethan. They have two items on Bruce, but he takes so much damage from Barry. Barry has nothing right now, realistically, and he's still and he's getting caught damage. again. He's, again, he's tumbling forward. He's playing aggressive, but he might just be dead again. He gets caught by the exhaust. He steps forward just one <sighs> second too long, and J Team very quickly punished that by taking down Bruce yet again. Ah, there we go. That's that scene. He's running towards him, <laughs> running towards Justin Timberlake, and then gets caught. And, 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 and that's just and the end. That's, oh, that's the end. Very good reference. And thank, even, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and even Yasera now. Yasera is definitely running out of time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yasera is trying to run away. He's trying to get help. He's calling all the help in the world, but unfortunately for him, he just has three tanky members of J Team, and that's one dead Garen. Don't normally say that too much. A True. dead Garen. You, you, Garen's you normally a tank not. or something, you know, yeah. normally gets kills, and this time it's the other way around. This time it's actually Garen the one. Yasera chose violence, though. He went for the Sterix Gauge Black Lever. Yeah. That's definitely a choose violence build. I think it was the same similar build as uh, yesterday. With, oh, absolutely. With, uh, you know, more aggressive Garen build. I think went Serena's Grudge, third item. <laughs> he looked at it and was like, yeah, I could do that. <laughs> I could definitely do that. Whatever you could do, I could do better. But unfortunately, Yasera can't do better this game because <laughs> JT, they have near enough, near enough of, well, what's it, 8,000 gold leads? At the moment, 7,000 gold leads. And the, the one thing I love about J-Team, like I've mentioned, is that when they get a gold lead, they're not worried, they're not afraid to go into enemy territory, go into the enemy jungle, get, get the deep vision. You can see the vision already on the bot side. You know, there's deep vision for J-Team on the bot side of the map. Right. There's one ward right there, which you can see on the map right now, at the, right at the bottom of your screen. One ward there, you've got another ward in the bot side of the map. And they're going to look to do this. You'll be seeing J-Team play aggressive and look to try and get deep vision because with their comp, they have great pick potential. They can look for flanks with DY, and you can see DY at the moment. He's moving through the enemy territory. And might even try and catch up Bayer. And again, Bayer has to use his package defensively. The package used trying to get some vision towards the Baron side, which makes sense with Flash Wolves now. But honestly, at this point, J-Team just have so much control. Yep. And it's one of the hallmark uh, uh, kind of the abilities of these amazing teams to be able to use the advantage they have to establish an amazing vision line. You can see the kind of fog of war set up for Flash Wolves, only vision towards that this. side of the Oh, level. look at this! And of course, Bruce going down yet again means J-Team pick up yet another uh, catch on the vein. We'll have to see if this means they want to try and go for the Baron or if they're gonna wait out for that. Well, they go for an oh, initiation, still going try in. and dive them in with the upper hand, pulls in a cookie. Cookie goes into stasis. as JT starting to come through. Dawn hits the ultimate, lands it onto the Kha'Zix, takes down the inhibitor mid lane and are opening up the game. Oh, this inhibitor down. Let's inhibit down in 13 minutes in this game. They took the first tower about four and a half minutes. They took the first Rift Tail. They took the first Dragon. Honestly, ever since then, Flash Wolves have struggled to get back into this game. It's been J-Team dominating. You know what we call that Death Brush? We call it Fnatic Death, death Brush. Right, right there. The Fnatic Death Brush. They're not even in Wild Rift right now. So uh, I feel like we can we can afford to give it to somebody else. What do you want? <laughs> we call it a J Team Death Brush. We call it a J. <laughs> we call it a Cherry Brush. <laughs> a cherry. A droop. A droop brush. A droop brush. <laughs> the cherries grow on bushes. <laughs> <laughs> no. I don't even know at this point. Cherries, berries. 
droops, droops <laughs> everything. <laughs> any any more fruit enjoyers? <laughs> fruit and vegetables. <laughs> <laughs> any fruit enjoyers in chat? <laughs> Well, JT, we're very close to closing this one out, I think. I will, you know, I think we established you're, kind of, you're half glass empty kind of guy. I'm a half, uh, half a glass half full kind of guy. So I want to look at the bright side. Ysera, in his matchup against Dawn, did decently, right? I mean, it is the Garen. It's an easy matchup, like you said. You know, the Garen generally gets to play safe. But he got to go for a more aggressive build. It's like 2-2-1 two, two, or something like that. Scoreline looks okay. Uh, so it's, I think going into the next matches, Ysera will not be the, the the worry. I think it's down to the bot side now, how Bruce and Baya intend to get in here. Yeah, I think Bruce and uh, Eason, you know, they, they definitely struggled in this game. You know, I think it was Bruce just playing a little bit too aggressive in this game. And they're going to have to go back to the drawing board now. This is going to be pretty much J-Team just trying to close out, close it out. They're going to try and go head towards the Baron. But you can see at the moment that towards that Baron, you can see, look, again, the Death Brushes. They're all going towards them. And the cherry just brush. to go in. <laughs> the Cherry Brush sliding away gives J-Team the first kill, taking down Ethan and very quickly move on to the second target. Cookie gets to escape with the invisibility. Baya with the exhaust will hold Cherry Bruce in place, but alone. Dawn will not be stopped. Gets the chase after on the turret. Meanwhile, Bruce goes down now. The only two remaining members on this side of Flash Wolves in the side of J Team, Baya the next to fall, and J Team very dominantly take control of the game and are looking to close out game number one in their favor. Yeah, they only lose three kills in the end. They Ooh, only lost one that's power, the ace. and that's it. That's the prime game in Ace, and J Team take a dominant game one against Flash Wolves. Exactly the start you want to see from J Team. Flash Wolves need to do a lot more to pull back confidence for games two. Three, maybe four in a reverse sweep. Oh, maybe. I, 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 I feel the WCS copium right now coming out from you. I feel it. So, and Flash Wolves will not get close if Bruce plays like this. It, it is just pretty, pretty clear and straightforward. This was a case of Bane spotting here in Wild Rift. <laughs> It, it truly was. And honestly, though, props to J-Team because I feel like they kind of force Flash Wolves into the situations as well. You call back to what J-Team banned away in the second phase of the draft. You look at Barry's damage as well. Fantastic performance from him. Uh, J-Team banned away Zaya and Lucian, two of Bruce's best picks to really have a good laning face on. And that really just leaves the only marksman options for him in the dragon lane down to Cocky and the Vayne. They put the Cocky in mid lane. Maybe they should have considered putting, it, putting that in the hands of Bruce and he gets forced onto the Vayne. One thing leads to another and this yeah. game plays out. Yeah, but I mean, I mean, there's so many others that we've seen be played before. The Varus comes to mind here.